the hardest part about it all being postponed was probably the not knowing. So at first, like obviously we went into lockdown, we found out that we couldn't train, but we still thought the Olympics was going ahead. So we were all trying to find crazy ways to keep pushing and keep training, thinking the Olympics is still going to go ahead um, and not knowing how long we wasn't going to be training for. So I think like when it initially got told, it was like, at least we know now we can stop, you know, pushing too hard. But yeah, you know, obviously absolutely gutted. Um, you know, next month I'm supposed to be go, flying to Tokyo and trying to do something that no one's ever done and make history. So, but you know, like I said, it, things happen and you just got to deal with it. So I'm just so happy that it's been postponed, not cancelled. So I've still got that chance to, to make history and, um, and to achieve my dream. So I'm just focusing on that really. Yeah, so I got an injury. I think it was the end of February in my last competition and I was due to go on to the final and um, I just felt something not quite right with my knee. So anyway, I got an MCL tear, grade two, and um, literally it's the first ever injury that I've really had. Um, but obviously I had time to recover for the Olympics, so it was all fine. And then just as I was recovering, um, we went into lockdown. So then when the, the National Academy did open back up, um, yeah, basically they said, you know, your knee's still not fixed and it was still a grade two. So I had to go back into the, the brace um, for a couple of weeks. Um, and yeah, just make sure it heals properly because I have got time now to fix it properly because obviously there's a year to the Olympics now. So I might as well take this time out, recover it properly and then build back up again. So the, the first day that we found out, we literally like drove our cars to the National Academy where all the training equipment is and the performance director let us take as much stuff as we could fit in our car. So we got taekwondo mats, um, we got a watt bike, weights, um, bars, literally anything that we could grab. We took three cars and like um, stuck all the stuff in it um, and then literally the next day we like reorganised all the gym. So my my garage was literally just a big mess, you know, where you just chuck everything in. And we like redid it, put taekwondo mats in, we got a kicking bob, um, and literally just made it into a place where we can train and still push really hard. So, so to be fair, yeah, we did quite well. Like, um, we still was training like twice a day and, you know, still, yeah, pushing really hard. So I think I was quite lucky that I was locked down with my roommate, who's also world champion as well. So. Like I said, we were still, you know, we were still sparring, still getting the pad working and going for runs, doing weights. So to be honest, we were training uh, just as much. <laughs> yeah, so at first working at, at home was quite fun. Um, got to go down to the gym in my slippers and sometimes my dressing gown. So it was quite good, um, you know, the fact that you could do it anytime you wanted um, in your own time and things like that. But yeah, as like, say the first week was fun and then the second week it was like, oh, okay, we're over this now. And... Um, sometimes we'd be set up here watching TV, having our breakfast, and then we're like, oh, should we go down? But, um, you know, one of us would just motivate the other and like, come on, let's get it done. Um, and it, it kind of gave us routine, to be honest, as well, like routine that we needed. So we just smashed it out and then, you know, enjoyed the day and um, just watched TV and did, did normal stuff as well. Um, yeah, to be fair, you know, I found it harder than I thought I would. Um, Obviously, you think as an athlete and a fighter, you know, you're mentally strong and um, I just thought it'd be quite nice to have, you know, some time off or whatever because we're always so strict and scheduled. But I think um, what I found the hardest is, like, what I didn't realise is, you know, I've, I've always had a big goal that's, you know, that's always been the focus. So every day I'm waking up, it's for that Olympics or that competition, whereas just you didn't know when you were going to fight next. Do you know what I mean? You literally didn't know what was going on, so it was quite hard um, not having a goal and not having a, a challenge. Yeah, but the things that helped me was just obviously like FaceTiming my family and keeping in touch with them and just going for walks and things like that, just little things that make you happy in that moment. And then I just kept every day like telling myself what I was grateful for, so it's easy to you know, get in a rut of, oh, I haven't got this, or I, I wish, you know, I wish the Olympics was happening, I wish this, whereas you know, I'm so lucky, I've got all my family healthy, got a nice house, got, you know, just everything that you're grateful for and, and that kind of put me in a good mood for the day. 
Yeah, um, I, I used to say it was like to make history and to do something no one ever has done, which, you know, that still is um, one of the main reasons. I think, you know, like I, I feel like I've got this talent and I've put all my life into this, so it's, you know, I've got to try and do that, that thing that no one's done and to leave like a legacy and, and like I said, just to retire knowing like, you know, wow, I did that. But now I'm kind of realising it's just that, that thrill of winning and the buzz of winning. Like for me, the Olympics is the pinnacle in the sport and it is literally, you know, the best feeling ever standing on that podium with the national anthem playing and knowing you've done, you know, that four years of work and it's all paid off. So I think I'm kind of just addicted to, to winning because I just love the feeling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah when I get a day off, um, I think if it's after a competition, um, I love to have a night out, you know, with my friends and kind of let my hair down. I think because we're so strict, um, you know, you've got to eat right, you can't drink, um, you've got to sleep, make sure you've got X amount of hours every day to, you know, to maximise performance. So obviously when I've done a competition and I've won, so I feel like I just deserve it and can let my hair down. A, a good night out's fun. And then also just um, to relax, like going to a spa, you know, with my friends and my family, having massages and things like that. Uh, my greatest role model, that's a hard one. Um, I think I'd have to say my granddad. Um, he's the one who got me into it and, you know, when I was eight years old, took me down to my local club. And then, you know, he used to work night shifts, um, like 12 hour night shifts, and then he would go straight from that, have no sleep and, and drive me to like Manchester to go training, to, to get the best training. And um, literally drove me all across the country. And, and then even when I was a kid, like anything, that I needed to do, he, he would help with. Like I remember him, he'd have me running up and down the stairs with leg weights and, and doing the things to like strengthen me up. And so yes, I just owe it all to him. And, and still now I, I go to him for his advice and um, you know ask him how I did and he'll always be honest. He'll never say like, oh yeah, you did amazing. He'll just be like, no, that wasn't very good. <laughs> I think my best achievement has to be the London Olympics. Um, you know, being just 19 and, um, I did so well to even qualify because I'd only been in the, the national team for like two years so no one kind of expected it and I remember back then people would say like oh you know it's your first Olympics like just go for experience it doesn't matter but I was like no I'm going to win and like I knew I was going to win but I don't think anyone else did so um, there was kind of no pressure and it was just you know everything to gain so it was literally just the, the best experience ever really. Uh, probably the toughest moment, I remember a competition straight after the London Olympics, like my first one back and you know I felt like I kind of had a target on my back, everyone just wanted to beat me and um, kind of all this pressure whereas still then I was only 19, I wasn't um, a, a perfected athlete so going into that competition I don't think I was quite mentally ready and I remember losing first fight and it literally felt like the, the end of the world kind of thing and then also as well the World Championships, I kept just missing out for, I think it was like four times, and then it was only last year that I managed to, to secure the world title and, and add it to the list. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think so. Um, like you can get so wrapped up into the Olympics and, you know, your sport and winning that gold, and it kind of feels like the end of the world if, if you're not going to get it, whereas now sitting back, you know, it's made me realise what's important and you know in, in all like health and things like that it's like sports kind of nothing it doesn't even mean anything so um, but it's kind of uh, I've seen it in a positive so it's like just go out there go for it and you know just enjoy it so I think definitely I'm going to enjoy it more like and enjoy the journey from now as well. Yeah I, I try not to but I think to be honest it's more the pressure I put on myself and because I've got this thing in my head you know I'm like the chosen one like no one's managed to win three Olympic golds in Taekwondo, so it's kind of like, ooh, am I the chosen one? Can I do it? Um, so I think it's that kind of pressure I've put on myself, because obviously if I don't do it, it's like, oh, no, it wasn't. But, um, but yeah, I try to see it as everything's a bonus, you know. I've got two Olympic golds, world champion, European champion, so, um, you know, I've done amazing so far, so the, the rest is a bonus. If, if I can manage to do that um, third one, then obviously it'll be amazing and you know I believe I can but um, yeah seeing it as a bonus is, is a better approach for me.
Yeah, I think if I wasn't a Taekwondo athlete, it would definitely be something in sport because I just love sport and even in school like, I wasn't really interested in anything but uh, PE, that was it. So um, I think when I was a kid I always wanted to be a PE teacher, so maybe that could have been me. <laughs>